Okay, so we are talking about fluorescence resonance energy transfer or FRET. Now, this is a very important technique when we want to uh, when we want to see whether two proteins are interacting, or in short, protein protein interaction. Now, let's say I have a protein X and a protein Y. And I want to see whether these two proteins are interacting in any way, whether they're binding to each other. So I can use this FRET technique in order to determine their binding or interaction. So before we move on, there are certain requirements for FRET. So the basic requirements for FRET is that the two proteins that we're interested in, first of all, they need to be tagged with two proteins should be should be tagged with different fluorophore different fluorophore now fluorophore now fluorophores are molecules that upon excitation with a certain wavelength of light they can emit certain wavelength of light so this is the first requirement. The second requirement is the emission wavelength, the emission wavelength of one fluorophore, of the first fluorophore, of the first fluorophore must overlap or must be the same as must overlap the excitation wavelength of the second fluorophore. So basically, we use two different fluorophores and the two different fluorophores, the most, in most use cases, the two different fluorophores are um, CFP, which is cyan fluorescence protein. It emits a fluorescence of cyan color, which is a shade of blue. And the other one that we use is YFP, that is yellow fluorescence protein. Now, the cyan fluorescence protein, the cyan fluorescence protein, it sort of takes in or it can be excited with a wavelength of uh, around 450 nanometers and it can emit and it can emit a wavelength of fluorescence of 490 nanometers. Right. Now, for the yellow fluorescence protein, this 490 nanometer wavelength, this becomes the excitation wavelength for the YFP. And um, it sort of uh, emits uh, near about 540 nanometer, uh, which is the yellow color wavelength in the VIPGR color scale. So these are the different wavelengths that, uh, that, that, that sort of are used in order to uh, excite these two fluorophore. Now you can see the 490 nanometer, this is a spectral overlap between CFP and YFP. Now since this is spectral overlap, these two become uh, potential candidates for using as fluorophore. Uh, in case of uh, in case of fret or fluorescence resonance energy transfer, so basically what we do, this is my protein X and my protein Y. We tag one of this one of the proteins with CFP, and the other one with YFP. Another important requirement which I missed out is the two proteins interacting should be or must be 
must be the distance basically the distance of the two proteins distance between two proteins must be less than 10 nanometers okay so these two proteins should not be more than 10 nanometers apart less than 10 nanometers right if the two proteins are very far apart the emitted spectrum or emitted uh, wavelength that cannot be uh, used as an excitation wavelength for the next fluorophore okay so if i draw a little graph over here then let's say this is the wavelength and um, this is the absorbance absorbance or fluorescence rather fluorescence so the excitation of a CFP is around uh, like I said it is 450 nanometers and then it emits around 490 nanometers whereas the um, let's draw it with the red color the YFP it sort of takes in or it, it is sort of excited with the same um, uh, emitted spectrum of CFP and it emits around 540 nanometers so over here the two different molecules has they've got a spectral overlap right so let me point it out this is the uh, these two are for the CFP and these two are for the YFP and this is the excitation and this is the emission similarly this is the excitation and this is the emission and these these two are overlapping over here in this region that is why we can use these two as uh, two different fluorophores for performing FRET right so this is basically the resonance that we are talking about in the uh, I mean in the name fluorescence resonance so one excitation spectrum is resonating with the emission spectrum of the other right so like I said um, the CFP would be tagged with one of the proteins and the YFP with the other when if let's say let's say uh, let me draw it once more let's say this is the protein and this is my other protein now this is tagged with CFP and this is tagged with YFP when the appropriate wavelength that is for CFP it is 450 450 nanometer is given to the CFP it is going to emit 490 nanometer which is cyan fluorescence and this 490 nanometer cyan fluorescence this wavelength is going to be taken up by YFP and at the same time YFP is going to release the yellow co color which is around 540 nanometers so this is my yellow color and this I can detect and say that these two proteins are interacting right now since they're interacting they're not uh, they're not more than 10 nanometers they're not far apart in more than 10 nanometers so that is why we can say the technique is successful and these two proteins are interacting basically if the two proteins would have been you know would have been apart more than 10 nanometers more than 10 nanometers let's say one protein is over here and the other one is somewhere over here 
although they would be tagged with the fluorophore although they would be tagged with the fluorophore but the 450 nanometer I'm exciting the CFP the 490 nanometer that would be emitted won't reach the YEFP won't reach the YEFP that is why the distance is very important that is why the distance is very important it should be less than 10 nanometer right so in this case it is not less than 10 nanometer that is why it is not detectable and there you have it you have the basic concept of fret so one one uh, one of the fluorophore should have an emission spectrum which should be equal to the excitation spectrum of another one then only the resonance can occur right and to do that basically you need to have the two proteins or the two molecules uh, they should not be more than 10 nanometer in distance then only the resonance can occur and the transfer can occur the resonance transfer the energy transfer or the wavelength transfer can occur so there you have it you have the basic concept of fluorescence resonance energy transfer